My name is Terry Doctor. I fix old cars and motorcycles as a hobby, and I work as a deaf interpreter and a consultant for factories and contractors like Boeing and Lighthouse for the Blind. I was born and raised in North Dakota, but we moved to Portland, then Tacoma. I had a lot of relatives still in North Dakota and also Minnesota. So every summer, I remember joining my dad on road trips, going back and forth to visit our relatives. My dad had lots of different old cars. A 49 Nash, a Ford Galaxy 500, and my earliest memories were from those summer road trips. I remember being on the highways and counting the Fords, Chevys, and Mopars as they passed by. I don't know where the fascination came from. It was just built in from the beginning. I remember sitting in the front seat between my mother and father. My father would keep his foot on the pedal but take his hands off the wheel. It was the coolest thing. I never could put my foot on the pedal. That wasn't allowed. But that's how I started learning to drive. The first cars and trucks I remember playing with were Revel model cars. I didn't need to be hearing for that. I could still see and touch. I even remember the smell of the glue. It's the same with driving, or even with working on cars. I'm deaf, sure, but it's not a problem. I can feel if the car isn't running right. I understand how it all works. Sometimes if a tool would fall, I wouldn't know if it hit the ground or got stuck in the corner. So I'd have to search. But I got a free hearing aid, and that helped me hear how far the tool falls. I know if it only makes a couple of sounds, it's close to the top. If it rattles more, it's probably on the ground. The hearing aid has actually saved me time looking for tools. I'm not sure where my passion for working on cars came from. I'm an old soul. I was born in 1950, but I'm not sure what happened before then. I've always had a built-in passion for taking things apart and learning how they function. Like carburetors, the float valve, bowl, and needle. I just get it. I see parallels with my body. We breathe air in and out of our lungs. Our hearts pump blood. We eat and excrete waste. Cars get filled with gas and exhaust fumes come out of the tailpipes. There's plumbing in both systems. I think the concepts are similar, and I understand how it all works. I never studied formally. It was always hands-on. If I'd hit a wall, I'd grab a manual. But because English was my second language, I'd be learning the language as I was learning about the car. In my garage, whoa, it's another world right there for me. In here is real. In there, it's more of a fantasy world. But really, it's mine, and I have it right here. I see things in there now that were in my dreams two or three years ago. So many projects, but actually it's nice. Depending on my state of mind, I decide what I want to do. I have engine work, electrical work, mechanical work, heavy-duty work, welding work, replacing a part. Depends on what I prefer in the moment. I can pick anything. So many options. I'm not stuck on one linear track. I'm open in my garage. In there, it truly is garage therapy. At night when I'm tucked into bed, I'm thinking about the cars and their to-do list. This car needs this, that car needs something else, and then lights out. If I only had one car to focus on, I'd become an insomniac. I'd never stop thinking about that one car. ABCs help some people fall asleep, like sheep jumping over the fence. For me, it's my cars that put me fast asleep. I've experienced so many different kinds of cars and motorcycles. Indian, Harley, Yamaha, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, DeSoto, Porsche, VW, Pontiac, Renault, Mercury, and on and on. Over the years, I've really enjoyed learning how different manufacturers built their cars. 
And when I started buying, I could see all those differences for myself. It started around 22, 23, 24, and it keeps growing as I keep adding more cars. Now I have so many different cars, and I really enjoy it. If it's got two wheels or four wheels, I'll buy it. Building such a diverse collection, it keeps me interested. It keeps a fire burning inside me. Fixing the cars keeps that fire burning too. If there was only one car to focus on, that fire would practically go out. The variety, all these different cars, all this stuff around my house, it keeps my fire nice and warm. Deaf people's eyes are fast and active. They're not distracted by the radio. They can still feel the music, sure, but hearing people's eyes follow their ears. They get distracted more easily, and that can lead to a crash. Deaf people's field of vision is wide open, undistracted. Deaf people have a better pair of eyes. And their optic nerves are actually thicker than hearing people's. The communication between our eyes and our brain, it's like a highway compared to a hearing person's surface street with one ways. In my opinion, deaf drivers are actually safer than hearing drivers. Some people call me a doctor of cars, partly because of my last name, doctor but also because I'm good at diagnosing problems and narrowing down what course of action you should take. If I can't fix it, you need to get someone to plug into it and read your codes. Engine codes aren't my thing. I prefer organic discussion. It's good stimulation and feedback. That's why I stick to older cars. So I understand why people call me the car doctor, but I'm really an old car doctor. Are new cars different than old cars? Oh yeah, lots of differences. They're easy. They're for lazy people. Sitting in there surrounded by electronics, going fast and yeah, you get to work on time, sure. It's nice to get there faster, but is there any passion? I'm totally disconnected from that experience. It feels odd. After driving a new car back and forth to work, I need to get acquainted with one of my older cars, fire it up, and go for a drive. It's what I enjoy. I'm not a new car guy. Definitely not. The world is going through huge changes, but not necessarily for the better. Global warming and the other changes happening around the world actually strengthen my love of old cars. As the world goes downhill, I focus on my cars. I call myself the recycler. I recycle old things. Machines are cranking out new electric cars. Cool. But it's not better for the environment. All that plastic requires chemicals to be made. There's old metal on my cars, sure. Some are rusty. But they can be cleaned. And they all run good. Recycling. That's my passion. It's strong. And my heart is full. Earth's going downhill and the ice caps are melting, the north and south poles are breaking apart, and there are electric cars everywhere. I'm staying with recycling old parts and keeping old cars on the road, because that's what I enjoy. Mm.